Or if I say anything, I can be, I can be really, uh, really broadcast. Okay, so prayer requests and praises. Uh, I didn't. I kept meaning to ask you how things go Thursday with you. I uh, nothing has changed. Okay. Uh, he gave me the option of a needle biopsy or <laughs> or I forget what. Urologist, it was. urologist. Then, so he went since to the nothing's urologist. changed. Uh, just wait, look at it again in six months. I said, I think I'll take the six months. Oh wow. He wow. said that's what I would choose to. So yeah. So um, uh, Jerry is back home. Mona's uh, biopsy came back um, negative. Good. So she's fine. That's good news. Jerry's home. Um, that's good news. And uh, haven't gotten an update on um, on that one as far as prognosis and all that good yeah. stuff. But uh, uh, that uh, Abiduskis are uh, went north on an emergency again. Uh, mm -hmm. There seems to be family issues. Uh, them going. Um, uh, to family issues um, up north and um, uh, so that they'll we plan on baptizing Rick and Duncan next Sunday um, they, oh and that's the other some praise so a week ago Sunday was um, two weeks ago today Aja yep. last week was Tim Baker and uh, uh, today we're gonna probably have a whole family baptized today and then next week the Abiduskis. Uh, see the bells show up. Uh, let me let me guess which one made them late um, and it's not the women. Yeah. So um, uh, what other prayer requests praises? What, yes ma'am. I'm in sync. You're in sync? Yeah. Yeah that's a band you know. Yeah. Is it a boy band? Is it in sync a boy yeah. band? Is that a boy band? Yeah. yeah I don't I don't track boy bands. Yeah. yeah, they shocked her and stopped her heart. Wow. Come right back in the room. Wow, that's good. So she's, she's, uh, I'm in the city. Oh, yeah. yeah, beating the drum. Bang the drum slowly. Is that what it is? Yeah. What else? Yes, sir. Pray for Anna. She's not feeling very good today. It's not COVID. She's just not feeling good. She's not feeling good. Okay. Okay. Is that repercussions to other health issues? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, Bob, our Bob. Yeah. Today, our Bob. Our Bob. Our Bob. Our Bob. He's, um, today's the anniversary of his wife's death, and it's the first uh, no, no, the anniversary. It's the anniversary of his wedding, and this is the first anniversary since the death. And so just keep him in your prayer today. He's really mm. sad. Oh, wow. wow. Really wow. struggling with that. But I have a praise, too. Yeah. I have had such a great time at work, and I get to meet a new person every two minutes. And I've got to talk about Jesus and about people in my church and talk to addicts. And it has just been mind-blowing. That's so cool. And I haven't messed up that much. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, we never like messing up. But, um, and how, it's, where's the boy? Is he? Which boy? Jonathan. Jonathan. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see it because of the camera, I guess. So. Yeah, so how'd the oral surgery go, dude? Yeah. I'm still here. You're still here? You do look, still look a little, yeah. like, yeah, a little puffy. Yeah. One of the, one of the more attractive ones. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, Jonathan on Wednesday had some oral surgery, and it was, it was really kind of funny. We were all talking about uh, it would have been fun to uh, videotape you while you're on happy juice. Yeah. <laughs> happy juice is always fun. Just yeah, that's what I heard. You were boring. He just so. slept. Like, he just slept. Yeah. Emma's nasty. Emma's nasty. Yes. We know about Emma. Oh, you meant when she was under. Yeah. I'm nasty all the time. Okay, any other prayer requests? Yes, sir. A friend of mine is having spine surgery in two days. Two days, yes, that is true. Tuesday. Yes. Oh, and, and co-op starts on Friday, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I've, we're having an overnight here with the team Friday next night. Next Friday night, yeah. 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 So there is going to be a lock-in next Friday night with some very brave... Wes and Anna and Jerry and Mona and Jerry. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, yeah. I was saying very brave adult volunteers. Better than, than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, those been there, done that. Yeah, those bring back memories. How hard can it be? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, you did hear about mean ones and boring ones, didn't you? Yeah, just multiply that times eight or ten. But yeah. you said how hard can it be? It's just teenagers. Yeah, just teenagers. Yeah. No, no yeah, they're the worst. <laughs> well, and apparently you worked at an elementary school, right? I did. Let's see. Yeah, worked at an elementary school. I don't think there's any problems. Yeah. Okay, any other prayer requests? Yes, sir. Just continue to remember Casey. Yeah, we were just talking about Casey. Uh, continue to be in prayers for Casey. And, and um, have you been open about? He's in um, he's in Roan County Jail, and he's got some significant charges against him, and it doesn't look very good. Uh, but as we were talking, uh, as Randy and I were talking this morning, this could be finally his come to Jesus um, moment. So. Um, be in prayer. Anything else? My um, uncle that I asked for prayers about a few weeks back, it was diagnosed with stage four cancer, so they're not doing goodness. Wow. It was pancreatic that's now in the bone. So. Mm -hmm. It's metastasizing. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's, yeah, that's stage four anyway, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, I mean, surprisingly, he's saying he's not in excruciating pain, which they, they don't understand how that's even possible. Yeah. But, yeah. Anybody see Bart last week? No. Not they're, not that I know of. They're struggling to um, they have not told my grandma because my grandma has Alzheimer's. And so um, they're not wanting to say anything because every day it'll be the reliving it over and over and over again and my grandma's already passed away, my dad passed away years ago. Um, so but so there's some arguing in the family because some people feel like he needs to know, other people feel like he doesn't need to know. Um, yeah. At some point in time, he's going to recognize that you know, it's not coming around. So. Yeah. It, the Alzheimer's is interesting because as as the memory retrogrades, uh, then interesting things happen. They still remember brothers and sisters and whatnot, but because they see them as older people, they get them confused with like, uh, "Hey, this is my brother," but um, I'm. He looks more like dad or grandpa or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, who wants to open us with a prayer? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Dear Father God, we come here today to just learn about your word, to just dive in and just see where you want us to go, God, and just, just pray that we just open our hearts up to you and just feel your Holy Spirit here and that we would just be able to learn and become a little bit more knowledge about you. Amen. Amen. Of course, we're we're continuing to talk about um, about church polity, and uh, last week, if you watched online, it was Ephesians chapter four, and uh, um, so how did I get these mixed up? Okay, so last week we started with Ephesians chapter four, and. Um, and just went through a little bit of that. But this week, I want to just kind of question you about um, different church offices. So, have you ever been in a congregation that had chairman, for example? And we're kind of concentrating on the chairman of the board. Chairman of the board or... Chairman of the elders. Chairman of the elders. How many have been in those situations? Chairman of the elders, chairman of the board. <clears throat> so uh, so then that brings up uh, another thing. I think I've got that one in here. And that is, you've had a board. So what is a board? It depends on where you are. What's that? I said it depends on where, uh, at what church you are at. Yeah. What about this? Have you ever had one of these? No. Nope. No. No? Never had a president? Thankfully, that's probably good. You did. I worked at the Biden County Baptist Association, and they did have a president that was over the association, so I was a part of that group. In they, that context. Hold on to that. I hadn't thought about um, bringing that sort of model into uh, the discussion. 
um, because you had a Baptist association. Now, was it Southern Baptist or it was Southern Baptist? Um, <laughs> so, uh, where is where is this in the Bible? It is. Yeah, it, it's not really in the Bible. The, um, is there kind of does there kind of appear to be something like a board in the Bible? The, the Pharisees and Sadducees. I was going to say the elders were the Jews. Hold on to that. And let, Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I did want to open that up, though. Uh, so, yes, you do see it with the Sanhedrin. So that's kind of a board. But you also had boards that were in the synagogue, and you had presidents in the synagogue. Uh, uh, it doesn't always get clarified. It's not necessarily in the Bible, but that was just part of their tradition. Um, president, as far as denomination, what denomination would you likely have a president? If you even call it Christian. That could be a big hint. Mormon. Yeah, Mormon, Latter-day Saints. They, they might have something like that. So, um, so you don't necessarily have a board. What about if you are... So I mentioned um, a couple of different denominations. What about... Oh, where did you go? problem with having all of these. What about congregational churches? Anybody ever been in a congregational church? I had a guy who worked for me that was a congregational church. Yeah. yeah. What's a congregational church? Run by the congregation. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, do, do we do that within our churches? What's that? If we don't have an outline set up, we end up doing that. Yes. Oh, here it is. It's just and read it properly. Uh, when we don't have an eldership set up, does that happen in our churches sometimes? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it does. Uh, now, when you say us, are you talking Church of Christ, Independent Christian Church, us? I'm seeing Restoration Movement is what I see. Uh, yeah, we... We actually, we did have a board in Lewistown. Um, just as a little bit of a background story, if you didn't know it, uh, I got to Lewistown, and, and it had been through a split, and um, number one, the eldership that they had picked was not a biblical eldership. Of, of all the people that they had picked, I would say, there were, and there were four at the end before the split, I would say one might have qualified as an elder, and but they had so damaged the two that were remaining uh, when I got there. It so damaged their um, their ministry and the ministry, and one of them didn't even come close to qualifying as an elder. Um, I asked them both to resign, so I operated for a short period uh, without an eldership. And I've told you that story before, but it's really uncomfortable for me, uh, even though I don't have a. Um, I'm not dyed in the wool restoration movement. I, di I didn't come up through the restoration movement, um, but I have become very acclimated to the model, and uh, and it makes it very very uncomfortable for me. Um, what's the problem with congregational? Th that's the easiest way to to do it. Is they don't necessarily follow the biblical model. Might they have things like an elder? Yeah, they might have an elder, they might have deacons, they might have, you know, a lot of offices that you would have in other churches, but um, but they operate by a, uh, a different model when it comes to decision making. Yeah? In a congregational church, wouldn't they do it by popular vote for the elders? Mm -hmm. Uh, they would do it by popular vote for the church. That's one of the reasons why it's called congregational is almost every decision really goes to a church vote. And what's the, what's the history of church votes in the Bible? Going back to Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to build the uh, golden calf. They, there's all kinds of issues with congregational sort of decisions. But does that mean even in the New Testament, congregation did not have input on stuff? 
as, as the six were chosen, they were chosen from or by the people in that church. How should we understand that, though? How could that be interpreted? Where do you find it, number one? Acts. Acts chapter... Six? Yes. Acts chapter 6. So, um, that's for the deacons. What about elders or uh, apostles? Uh, they were appointed. They were appointed. Um, how did they choose them initially? Well, the, the, the apostles appointed them, right, originally. Uh, they chose from among themselves candidates who yeah. had been there from the beginning to the end, and they came up with two names, and then they had to decide between the two names. So in Acts chapter 1, you see that, and then they, they cast lots for it. But Acts chapter 6 yeah. um, goes like this. Uh, verse 1, in those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. And uh, brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. So... Uh, how did they choose the seven men? Based upon quali uh, qualifications. It did. It, what was the? What were the qualifications or the characteristics that were asked for? Good representation of the Holy Spirit, wisdom. Yeah, and you know, any any of the other translations? Um, uh, do they read that vastly different in that section? No, it's, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Here's, um, so how can it be played out? Did they take a vote? Well, I believe you to think that they must have done something because they told, they brought the community of disciples together. Well, them, you guys choose. Yeah, you guys choose. We don't know the exact nature of how they chose. But they we just. That's right. So, um, and, and that's what I want to point out. So there is sort of this congregational input that's taking place. Um, they're told we need seven men from among you, and they have to fill these qualifications. They they've got to be full of what? Wisdom. Yes, uh, full of uh, full of the spirit and wisdom. Um, do you have your hand up for something? Yeah. Uh, before Mark came in, our church, we had a minister, and he just walked out of the church and all the elders left, too. Yeah. And I don't know how you place that in there, but the members of the church picked five people to search for a new minister, which I was one of them. Yeah. Uh, and hold on to that because uh, that's another way we do get congregations involved in like a pulpit search. We call it a pulpit search committee, don't we? So what I'm getting to is we don't know the exact nature of how they chose, but we do know that in Acts chapter 6, there was this congregational meeting and they're looking around for noses basically, but those noses had to be people who were full of the spirit and wisdom. And um, which is, that's pretty, that's an awesome sort of qualification, isn't it? For these guys to almost literally wait on tables, correct? Why? They were distributing food. Well, they were distributing food, but why full of the Spirit and wisdom? For acts of service. Well, certainly, in their contact with the people who are distributing it to, they had to be able to answer questions and, and be good representatives of the church. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, if you, if you really just kind of play it out and you use some of your own experience, it, there does need to be that sort of um, qualification that's taking place. That, that somebody who's going to be dealing with this by the way, is it a hot topic, what they were dealing with? 
Yes. yes. That's really what we need to get to. So they're saying, hey, there's this conflict in the church. This is good that we're talking about this, uh, considering this morning's topic. There's this conflict in the church, and it is a conflict. Uh, you need to choose men who are full of wisdom and the Spirit, and, uh, and they're going to wait on tables. And so you have to ask yourself, why full of wisdom and the Spirit? And all they're doing is waiting on spirits. Well, first of all, it's a hot topic. It's a big issue. You are going to answer questions. That's what Gary said for those who are watching. Um, uh, you, you're going to do you know, some, um, some big things. But what other things might come up with something that's a hot topic like this? Yes, sir. Would it also be a, like a logistical issue? Because you're, you're dealing with future, you're dealing with distribution, you're dealing with, you know, taking in of assets and dispersing it, and so there, there needs to be wisdom in, in that as well. Yeah. How far does that sort of qualification go then with uh, someone who's put in a service position within the church? How far should we take that need for it to be somebody who's full of wisdom in the Holy Spirit? I would think so, wouldn't you? Why? Because every every position you represent in Christ, yeah. whoever you're serving. You are. And um, what's another thing to you consider always? Do people act badly? <laughs> Do people in churches sometimes act badly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it could, uh, in, in almost any situation, could somebody, if this happens, let's say in politics that people sometimes reach a point and maybe they let the position uh, influence how they treat others around them like some people they treat badly other people they treat really well especially if they're married to me or they're my son or daughter they might get these positions of authority or these really great business deals can the same thing happen within the church yes. yeah yeah so it's, yeah that's why in the uh Qualification for the elders that says they can't be a new, a new Christian. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, um, that, uh, that brings up yet another story from Lewistown. <laughs> so um, I, I got there, and, um, and and we're facing the same thing here. We we really need to the same thing in a different way. Uh, we really need to set up a mission board here. We we need a mission board that. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to gun for 10% off the top of our offering goes right to missions. Um, but the mission board starts to decide um, who gets supported. You know, as a, as a ministry of the church and as a budget of the church, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so I get to Lewistown, and it's the weirdest thing I'd ever been to. I'd been to churches before where... Uh, they had stopped giving the missions because they were having troubles with money and then they started back up and, and they can't do it all because they've got troubles with money so they're, they're starting at a low percentage and they kind of move up. Uh, I had uh, uh, one church, one big church, I was executive minister, um, we, uh, we started at 10% and then every year we increased a percentage point. So the following year we budgeted 11% and then 12% and then you know, kept on going. Because there's a church in Canada that gives 50% of their budget to missions. Um, you know, that's what inspired me. I get the, I get the Lewis down and um, people in the church gave independent of the church to missions. And they had pet missions. And, uh, and they had this huge amount of money, half a million dollars that was in the stock market. And as they shifted money around, each time they shifted money, sold it, and they put it into another stock. And, they, they, and the, the one elder I told you about that didn't qualify as elder, that's all his job was, was to, he handled the money. He was, uh, and, and all he did was decide where the monies would go. He was just shifting the monies around. Uh, every time there would be a sale, they would take a percentage of that and give it to, uh, give it to the missions board who then Side of work. I still haven't got to the weird part uh, and what prompted it and just a second ago. Everyone on the missions board, with maybe two exceptions, 
was related to one of the missionaries that we were supporting. Mm. Wow. Okay. Now, why do you guys have a problem with that? <laughs> why would you think there's a problem with that? Yeah, what? Isn't it very dangerous when one individual in a church controls all the funds? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, big, big time. time. Yes, sir. We, we were actually were in a very similar situation where the church had kind of broke, where um, ministers had come and, come and gone, and we were in a new ministry. And this, this wasn't purely for the financial aspect as well, but it was also, it, it, it seemed to also affect the, 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 the dividing of duties as well, to where you had the, the minister and then his um, son or son-in-law, I believe, was in charge of worship, and almost all his entire family was on the worship team and working everything else yeah. there, and yeah. so the, there was no spreading out of duty. It was all in the family. Yeah, I, I've got some friends who... Um, the ministers of large congregations. And next thing I know, um, one of their sons is like the heir apparent. What's the problem with that? No way. Oh, man, yeah. It's just, I, I'm so thankful for uh, the example of Bob Russell and Dave Stone and Kyle Eidelman. Um, most of you may not even know who these guys are, but one of the largest churches we've got, Southeast Christian Church, and it's not the largest, by the way. It's one of the largest, and they peg out at about twenty thousand people on the weekends. Um, yeah, they have their own newspaper, all that stuff. Um, uh, they have two hundred elders on, uh, you know, two hundred elders, and uh, um, but their model was interesting. Dave announced eight years before he was going to retire that he was going to retire, and that. Uh, or not Dave, but Bob announced he was going to retire, and then Dave was going to be the one uh, that the elders had chosen to be the next minister at the church. So it just was a transition plan. But what most folks don't realize is um, Bob has two sons who are also preachers who are on staff and very capable ministers. His, his uh, one son, Rusty, is a phenomenal preacher. Um, is it Rusty in Florida? Now? Yeah, Rusty's in Florida now. So uh, phenomenal, phenomenal model. That's the way it ought to be done. Whereas I've had friends, and I'm just thinking, what are you creating? Then you know, is this your dynasty? Is this going to be whatever? I think that we need to be careful that is too when we're looking at some of the churches that have this model. I'm not saying like you was doing the right or wrong, but but sometimes we look at a church and it's the the pastor or the preacher's family who's stepping up and doing these other roles because ultimately the congregation doesn't. I mean, I've been to plenty of churches where we sit here and we do, 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 but no, 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 I don't do kids, or no, 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 I don't do this, no, 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 I don't, you know, that's for somebody else, and so I think we need to be very, very careful about it. Well, we do, and, and thanks for adding that, because it, that is a good observation, you know, because what gets us into these predicaments, a lot of times what sounds like good reasoning, Su Suzanne and I would, would have battles all the time. If you haven't figured out, our personalities are quite different from one another. <laughs> yeah. and, and so uh, I'm, I am very much that uh, the school of hard knocks. I am very much uh, in, in the idea that a fail is one of God's best lesson plans. That, that uh, for you to fail is one of the best ways God gets through to you. And, and so um, uh, we would sometimes get, well, somebody's got to do it. I said, no, they don't. Uh, people need to ha have it fail. You know, they, they just need to understand. Um, you know, uh, we, we left Lewistown, and, and there was some thinking that when we left, everything was going to fall apart because we were doing a good portion of the work. And uh, so Suzanne asked about it after a while. I said, no, they're doing really well. I said, our absence our leaving was actually one of the best things that ever happened because it created this void and they had to step in and start to do things finally and get things going. Um, yeah, sometimes sometimes it's necessary to make those hard decisions and, and make those things happen. Um, why stick so much to this idea of what does the Bible say? And that's the one word I, I failed to print out was Bible. What's... Uh, 
Why should we constantly go back and check ourselves against the Bible as far as model is concerned? So we're not in the error. Well, so we're not in error, um, but sometimes do we bring in, now let's go, we've already put up the congregational and picked on them. Let's go to These guys. Maybe we won't. We'll just pretend they're up there. I tried to be creative and use post-it notes to, but that doesn't necessarily work. So let's pick on these guys. Okay, do they have, do they have bishops? Yeah, the Baptist. No. Nope. Sure? I thought there were certain branches of Baptist. Oh, stop. Hold on to that. Yeah. Yeah, hold on to that. We weren't just talking about Southern Baptist. Do they have this? Yes. 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 Do they have deacons? Yes. Yes. yes they do. Do they have, I'm going to, I don't feel confident with this up here like that. I'm going to. Do they have this? Yes. yes. Lots, of Lots of them. A lot of them. them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do they have this? Chairman? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, they have a chairman. Do they have a priest? No, they don't. They don't have a bishop. We already determined that. Do they have apostles? No. Do they have prophets? Yeah. Uh, it's, um, what did you say earlier? What did I tell you to hold on to? Oh, the certain branches? Yeah, let's hold on to the certain branches. I'm going to tell you, uh, do they have teachers? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah? Do they have ministers? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and where is this guy? Yeah, here's this guy. Do they have that? Huh? No. Some. Uh, here's one of the. Um, here's our problem. I'm. I'm with you. We need to be careful when we take and we look at some other churches and uh, paint them with wide paintbrushes. And the same is true for Baptists. Because how many different Baptists are out there? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Uh, First Baptist, Second Baptist, Independence, Saint Will Baptist. Yeah. Everything you can think of, and every model that you can think of. Um, out there as far as church polity is out there underneath Baptist. Um, uh, so one of the things to remember is they are awful different. I've been in churches where this guy was really the minister or they would say pastor. I did print out pastor in here somewhere. Um, they did, here it is. This guy is actually the elder. They have one elder, and the pastor of the church is the one elder. Um, and that's a pretty common model. Is that the only elder they have sometimes? Do Baptist churches, and since we do have a fellow who, uh, which one do you guys, do you guys go to? Is it <coughs> the river? No, uh, my parents go to the river. I grew up in uh, Poplar Grove. Poplar Grove. So, um, and I came from a Southern Baptist background, so just so you know. Um, so the pastor is the elder, but there are plenty, including Southern Baptist churches. There are plenty of Southern Baptist churches who do have elders. Uh, what do they look like, though? Well, uh, sort of, kind of, because they can. What'd you say? They're old people. They're old. People. Super, super deacons. They are. It's kind of hard to nail down. It depends on the congregation, and every congregation is a little bit different. And it depends on whether it's American Baptist or Southern Baptist or Free Will Baptist or just about everything that you can think of. It's just a hodgepodge that's out there. 
But a lot of times, elder isn't necessarily what we define as elder. And a lot of times, the pastor or minister is the chief elder. Yeah. What is, if you know, what does Central's organization look like? They've got a little bit of both. So they have elders down there. Uh, um, Roland's a real nice guy. I love Roland to death. Um, um, you know, it, it's a nice congregation, um, nice fella. Um, but they, they operate with this. Their, their eldership, and he's got a pretty staunch eldership, they're more of a support in that case for the pastor. And he's kind of the chief. They do have tons of deacons. Um, my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion about what's going on down at Central. Uh, Roland's been there 30 plus years. I mean, I think he's pushing 40. Uh, I think personally he's getting ready to retire. And so he's just coasting. That that little gig down there, that would be the gig. Uh, because he can, I don't know how many weekends he takes off. I don't know how much he gets paid. I'm sure it's a nice little amount. He gets to go to Montana for hunts. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, and his son's a, his son's a surgeon, you know, an OBGYN. So, so um, yeah, that's a nice gig. But um, he's got tons of deacons there. He's got tons of elders. There is a board, um, which, as I mentioned that, and some of our churches have this same model. What's the problem with a board of deacons and elders? Deacons can usually outvote the elders. If you have, if you don't have some sort of balance of power, theoretically, and this was our church in Albany, Georgia, uh, theoretically the deacons could outvote the elders. That, that's one of the challenges as we take a look at them. And what's the problem with that biblically? Don't pick on them because... The elders are the ones who are responsible for spiritual affairs of the church. That's what we say, and that's what we're driving towards. That's what we're going to talk about. Yep. Um, but do we always allow that to happen? No. No. And uh, uh, so I'll tell you what a former Baptist friend of mine said about Baptist churches. He's now, he's now also a church, uh, minister at a Christian church. Um, he says uh, he, he's well used to Southern Baptist churches, and the, the deacons are notorious in churches. Uh, they might hire a preacher and get rid of them after three months. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. yeah. There, there was a time uh, that when I was growing up, like, I grew up. We had one like staff, and then um, at a certain point, our pastor left, and then a lot. Of, it was kind of like kind of a nasty split, kind of. And uh, you know, I just there was a there was just kind of a cycle there of people coming and, and leaving and stuff. It was just kind of just kind of weird, like the. Which which are, this is great because that helps us understand why the elders were so wise in Acts chapter six saying, choose from among yourselves uh, men who are full of wisdom and the Spirit. Um, because in this model that, that we just described, where was the real power in the church? The real power is with this board of deacons in what we just described. They have real power. A minister can come in and can have a lot of power. In essence, he becomes the chief elder, but guess what has to happen in order for, for that to take place? He's got to get really good politically. And so you, if you're popular, if the people love you, you know, that sort of thing, that shift in power can take place. Uh, also, one of the famous phrases for ministers, and, uh, and I'm really going out on the limb, you know, this is kind of like being a magician and telling, uh, telling the audience, well, this is how the other magicians do their magic. Their illusions. Um, same thing with ministers. Um, you just need a few good funerals. Mm. No, really. They, uh, that is a common bit of wisdom among ministers. You're, uh, you we're only a few good funerals away from a perfect church. Why would that be? No, sometimes, sometimes uh, because we're talking power. When you think in terms of power and you talk in terms of power, what you're really talking about is the only way for the power to get rested out of that person, that person's influence, is for a funeral to take place. And, 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 and what's that? You become emotional. Yeah, yeah. And, and so 
uh, we're talking shift the power, and if we really take, um, I'm going to do one more step before we wrap up, um, because again, this is a precursor as we get into the model. The truth is, is if we look for the biblical model, but we look just exactly like they did in Acts chapter 6, for full of wisdom and the spirit, not good businessmen, not, you know, because we like them or, man, they're kind of movers and shakers, they do stuff, but because they're full of spirit and wisdom, then something wonderful happens. And that is the balance of power or the real power shifts and it shifts in a place we have not talked about yet. Where does the power shift? Jesus. Who is the head of the church? Jesus. He's supposed to be. Is he? In some of these models, and let's take this away. Let's not just pick on our Baptist brethren because they're not the only ones who have problems. Um, because we could put up Presbyterians. We could put up Methodists and Lutherans. But we can also put up our own tribe. Couldn't we? Yep. We could put up our own tribe. And, and what happens is um, when we wrest control, power, for personal gain, away from Christ, we start to take a left turn. And so when we, when we choose the right people, does that guarantee us, by the way, that things will be perfect? No. Absolutely not. Uh, it doesn't guarantee us. But what happens is um, we, we start to have a better chance of it operating properly. Now, uh, let's really pick on the big tribe so uh, that we understand ourselves. Here it is. Because I really want us to understand how this happened. So, the reason I showed the other models is because a lot of times when we talk church polity, that a lot of times we're bringing our baggage from another model in. We know it works. We, we, we might have liked this, or here we are, we're in this collective kind of brainstorming, and so it's, it feels good to kind of offer an opinion, and people say, oh, that's a good idea. Um, but basically, we're, we're bringing a model that's not biblical in, and we're bringing it in because it comes from another place. Um, did they have ministers? in the Catholic Church, or do they? They have priests. Well, they do have priests, but do they have ministers? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. See, I told you, my, my teacher's best. It changes all the time. It does change all the time. But the other two get to be my teacher's best, merely because I think you got DNA from mom. So, yeah. <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have a chairman? Yes. Catholic Church. <laughs> Chairman? Okay. Well, they've got boards, that's for certain. They definitely have boards. And I have known of some chairmen of boards. Yes, you do. Um, they do. We call them the Pope, by the way. He's one of them. But you also have archbishops. You have cardinals. You have all those things. Uh, and by the way, are those, I was going to do a trick question on you, are those offices found in the Bible? Uh, priests are. Yeah. Well, we're all priests. We're going to go yeah. Yes, so we'll put up bishop to you, and it's not it's not the cyborg in um, in Alien. Uh, you have the priest. That was a really big bit of trivia, if you knew that one. What's his name? Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. They've got lots of different sorts of bishops. Even. They do. They do have all sorts of uh, uh, bishops. Um, they have preachers. They they have. Boards. They have ministers. Do they have deacons? They have lay leaders. They do, and, and actually, you can be a deacon and you can get uh, anointed a deacon in the Catholic Church. Um, uh, they they have different titles for them. It depends on what diocese you belong to as to what it looks like. And, and they have they they really have a big programming uh, for. There's even I mean we have our traditional sense of Catholicism. 
Yeah. I don't know if I want to call him sex, but like I have an aunt. I have a great aunt who's a very charismatic Catholic. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, which is very different from my great grandmother, who's the very traditional, or what we think of as very traditional. Well, um, f let me let me clarify that just a little bit. You have. Uh, famously, you have pre-Vatican II model Catholics out there. Pre-Vatican II are Latin-only services, oh. Mel Gibson sort of craziness, you know, that sort of thing. So there is pre-Vatican II. But even uh, uh, post-Vatican II, post-Vatican II Catholics are pretty interesting. Uh, you can have different masses at different, you know, uh, they meet uh, sometimes all time, all day long, different uh, services on Saturdays and Sundays, um, like we have multiple services. But the different services can have a different flavor. In, mm -hmm. in Melbourne, Florida, we had a very evangelical um, uh, congregation. Uh, they, had, uh, they had two or three services. Uh, if, you, if you stood on the street and talked to the church members who attended those services, those masses, and did not ask them what church you, you went to, you, within 15, 20 minutes, you would never conclude that they were Catholic. Mm -hmm. You would think they were evangelical. Um, my aunt, you would think she was Pentecostal. Yeah. Uh, I, I have some really good friends in Montana who are um, Pentecostal Catholics. Uh, 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 what's, a, what's a... Have you guys ever been in, uh, invited to... Um, what do they call them? Oh, what's... Um, yeah, they have a whole name for them. It's a weekend where you go away and you're kind of locked up in a church building, and um, and and it's deep spiritual significance. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Well, but you see, you also have them in Pentecostal, and uh, and they just go by different names. Um, here's the thing to remember. If we take and come into a church and sometimes bring a church model from a previous tradition that we attended and it influences our understanding of what it would, should be rather than what the Bible says uh, how should we also take and view the Catholics because as we take and look at them how did they get to all of this how did they get with uh, such a hierarchy politics Yes, both. Actually, he, uh, Andy said uh, politics or traditions. You said politics. Uh, think of it this way. Uh, as, uh, as the church was rising in early history, in early European history, and uh, so the church is rising, and you start to see um, really two things take place. It's the Orthodox tradition, but you have, uh, you have Constantinople, but you also have Rome that are both rising in power. Something else is starting to descend. What's starting to descend? The church. No, the the church well, is rising. Roman Empire, because the Roman Empire got split. Roman Empire is starting to descend, but um, as, as that void starts to take place, and the church, surprisingly enough, started to rise up and and really answer a lot of the, the needs that the um, that the government was no longer answering or could not answer. So they're rising up uh, and something happened. One of the things that happened is the model for administration came from uh, Roman government. You cannot um, take away the politics, take away the, uh, you know, just all the, is the issues uh, other than one or two other periods in history there was no more better organized government on the face of the planet than the Roman government. They were phenomenal. And so all that organization, that structure, that hierarchy, borrowed straight out of the politics uh, handbook. And so it started to drift its way into church. Now that we've picked on them, let me go back to where we started this. Did it happen in America with our churches? Better believe it. There is a trend. It's a big study and a big parallel. But we started to get far more congregational within our structures within the church 
in America after World War II. Why? I've mentioned it before, but you really have to think about it. Why World War II? World War II, you had a huge number of people, not just men, but remember women were also uh, overseas. Uh, men and women went over, they fought, and many of them died on foreign fields. And they, uh, they fought, and they died for what purpose? Freedom. Democracy, freedom. freedom. And so they come back very much, uh, very much um, just filled with, uh, with the beauty of democracy and freedom and what they had fought for and what their friends had died for in foreign fields. So it was very, very important for them to uphold things like, um, man, the people need to vote. And, uh, and so they came back into churches with this idea, and you started to see that drift towards congregational uh, models within the church in America, and, and, it's, and predominantly it's churches that were formed after World War II. So I've been in, in our, in our tribe, I've been in about every brand model you can think of, including a congregation in Georgia that had a board. The deacons theoretically could outvote the elders. Uh, they chose by vote. They chose everything by a vote. It was, a, if you didn't see Christian church on the outside of the sign, you would have gone in and thought congregational church. And that's because they had borrowed very heavily. And we had a huge percentage of World War II vets that were in the congregation. They had borrowed very heavily from that model uh, and, and projected it upon the biblical model. Uh, still had elders, and some of those, I, I, and I'm not, um, I'm not denying some of the best Christian men I've ever known in my life were elders at that church. But we also had some problems where some people who should have never been a deacon or an elder were deacons and elders in that congregation. And um, so what should be our purpose? Just what Acts chapter 6 taught us. Um, pick people who are full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit and try as much as we can to keep that power in Jesus' hands. He is the head of the church, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is the head of the church. And so sometimes we need to realize... No, it's not about politics. No, it's not about one person making the decision. No, 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 no. It's about Jesus being the head and the people who gather and try and make decisions are trying to do it so that he gets glorified. Uh, and that's a hard task. By the way, that takes the rest of our lives to do that. Father, we just give you thanks for this day. I praise you for the people that are here. We just pr uh, pray that as we go into this time of worship that... Man, it's, it's just a glory hallelujah moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.